I've seen people fasting, but at the same time they're swearing as well. People performing salah but thinking about their jobs, thinking about things that are not even part of your salah. Why does that happen? Are we thinking, are we believing that our jobs are more important than our salah? If not, then why don't we implement it? Why don't we implement it? Why don't we act upon it that, Ya Allah, I've come to pray to you, Ya Allah, and you're my only Lord, but then I'm thinking about other things. Does that make you a, a real servant, a true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It doesn't. What makes us true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the real servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are our sincerity, our sincere intentions, isn't it? And that can only be given to you and me when we have patience, when we have sabr. And how great is sabr? How significant is sabr? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ma'as-sabirin. Allah is with those who are patient. Allah is with those who are patient. Who have sabr. Who have patience. Now so when you have sabr in your life, only then you can succeed. Even in worldly jobs, in worldly things. When you don't have when you rush things, can you get them done properly? No. So the scholars say, As-sabru ala ta'a. That in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must be patient. Make sure you have patience, sabr. That when you perform in your act of worship, you do it properly. You do it properly. When you follow in the ahkam of sharia, you do them properly. Then the second type of sabr. They say the second type is sabr in the musibah. Sabr in the musibah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ musibah." That when they are struck by tribulations or problems in their life, when they face problems, musibah is what? Problems, tribulations. They do not start screaming, they do not start saying words that are disrespecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather they stay calm and they say, They say, It comes from Allah and we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It comes from Allah and returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We come from Allah and we return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not like people who start chanting names and start saying, what's this about? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take this from away from us? Patient people don't act like that. So this is a guidance for us that we must be patient. You know, a patient, a well is I'm talking about, who is a treatment. Why do we call that person a patient? Because he has sabr. You know, he's going, he's going through such hard times, and but Bachara, he's patient. Even that tells us that being in a state of sabr is that you're a patient. Being in a state of sabr is that you're a patient. That you have to do sabr. Though that patient is going through such hard, pro big problems, but he has to do sabr. In the same way, when we're going through problems, we need to be patient as well. Who doesn't go through problems? Everyone does. But it's only a test, isn't it? Innam al usri yusra. After every hardship, there's ease. Hmm? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. So the second type of sabr is what? A sabr inda al musibah. That you're going through problems, but you stay calm and you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a great friend of Allah, someone told him that someone took your horse. Someone took his horse. 
Now, as soon as he got told that, what did he do? And what would we do? Someone told him, your horse is gone. He stood up, he started praying two cycles of prayer, saying thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stood up, started performing two cycles of prayer, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This man who told him, who gave him that news, he said, what's going on? You lost your home. Someone took it away. Someone stole it. And you're thanking Allah. And that man of Allah said, look, they only took my horse, they didn't take me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected me. I thank Allah, Ya Allah, you saved me, but they took my horse, it's fine, but you saved me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saving you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you something better in life. What do we want? Oh, I want this, I want that. But why are we content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us? Did the hadith of Qudsi? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to Bani Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh Bani Adam, be content with what I've given you. Be happy with what I've given you. And if you do that, arahtu qalbak wa badana. I will come for your body and your heart. I will come for your body and your heart. That you do anything to earn more than what I've given you, you can't earn more than that. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a penny, you can only take a penny. You can't take more than that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will feed us. There's no doubt it's not going to feed us. He will give it. But then, and then we need to remember that we need to be patient. Have sabr, he will give it to you. Have sabr, he will give it to you. So the second type was as sabr inda al musibah that you go through problems and you are patient. Then the last type, the scholars say, as sabr anil masiyah. Now this type we need to understand is about sins when we commit sins. You know when it's Fajr time in the morning and we do wake up and you must have experienced this, that every, every person in Islam, even outside Islam, people who are not even Muslims, they've told me this as well, that they experience this, that every, around the time of Fajr, just before Fajr, something comes and wakes them up. They just wake up. Have you experienced this? Though you have you got no alarms or nothing, but you just wake up. You must be waking up at the Hajjah time. Or just after the Hajjah time, just before Fajr. Why is it that wakes you up? It's Tawfiq. Why is it? Tawfiq. It's that opportunity Allah SWT gives you that come and pray to me. You know what? Sayyidah Rabia Rahmatullahi Aliha was a great saint, a great friend of Allah. When someone asked her, now what do you pray to Allah in order to wake up at Fajr? What do you pray to Allah in order to wake up at Fajr? People struggle, you know, waking up at Fajr time. So Sayyidah Rabia Rahmatullahi Aliha, she said, I make this dua, Ya Allah, for the love you have for me, wake me up at Fajr. For the love you have for me, wake me up after you. Now people had objections at this. They're like, well, how, how can you say this to Allah? Ya Allah, the love you have for me, wake me up for that. You went to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't ask Allah to love you. But she replied, that my love for Allah is not forever. My love for Allah is not forever. But Allah's love for me is forever. Allah's love for me and you is? Forever. It's never gonna end. Even after the day of Qiyamah, Allah still loves us. So you ask Allah to love you. And you go towards that way, and someone comes and misguides you. You know, your friends, good company, your surroundings. If your surroundings are bad, you will become a bad person. If your surroundings are bad, you become a bad person. And your surroundings are good. You become a good person. You know, Shaitan was known as Iblis. Everyone knows him. I was asking one of my students, 
to tell me why don't they pray and then let me see please it's him it's not me trust me i said to him look leave that guy out for a bit tell me about yourself you know the biggest enemy we have within ourselves is our nafs the biggest enemy we have within ourselves is our nafs Shaitan is going to come and misguide you and how is he going to misguide you? What is the way? Does he grab you? Does he, you know, do something to you? You know, physically? No. Or blocks your way to the masjid? No. Shaitan is going to come and, you know, give you those whispers that, look, don't do it. But then, who is it who's agreeing to his whispers or disagreeing to it? It's you, isn't it? Someone comes and gives you a message, or oh, you want an iPhone? You're like, yes, I want an iPhone. Which one? iPhone Max. X Max. Now, are you agreeing or disagreeing? You're agreeing. So you're welcoming that. You're welcoming and you want to take it. In the same way, Shaitan comes and says, don't pray. And you're like, okay, thank you. Oh. <laughs> That's what we do. Why do we do that? Because there's no patience. We do things quickly. Even the first thought we get, you know when you start thinking about something good, the first thought we get is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know someone gives you a message, let's go to the masjid and pray. You know, let's go to the masjid and pray for Jalallahu or any, you know, talaq. And you start feeling like, okay, that's, let's go. But if you delay a bit, then what happens? Shaitan comes in. Shaitan walks into life. And what does he do? He starts misguiding you. So sabr al masya means that before you commit a sin, you must believe and know that Allah is watching you. And this is called real patience. That just be patient until the day of Qiyamah. And this is not just the day of Qiyamah that after that you will be blessed with so many things and you're going to have everything. Even in this dunya, those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are given everything. And this is not just about mal, this is not just about money. Or oh, I have cars, it means I have risk. You know, people say, we, Ya Allah, we ask you to give us risk. What does risk, risk mean? Is it only money? Is it only food? When you say, Wallahu khayru raziqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is the best of those who give rizq. Hmm? He's the best sustainer. Now when he gives sustenance to you, what kind of sustenance are you expecting from him? Are you just, are you just looking for food? Are you just looking for food? Are you looking for anything else as well? The scholars, especially Imam Ghazali, rahmanullah, he says, it's not just Food that you call risk. <coughs> your honor is your risk as well. Your honor is your risk as well. If Allah SWT has given you that dignity in your community, then you, you have risk. Your izzat is your risk. It's not just about money. Those who do not have honor and dignity in the community, but they have a lot of risk, what is, where are they going to take? All that is, they don't perform the acts of worship, they don't follow the religion, but they have a lot, of, they're rich people. But there's not that comfort in their heart. True. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you that is it, then you find that comfort in your heart. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it to you. Not the people around you, they don't give it to you. So running away from sins and not going close to sins and being patient when it comes to, when Shaitan, you know, comes and he starts to distract you or misguide you and you stay patient and you do not listen to him and you do not listen to those bad thoughts, that means a sabr and a And that sabr will always help you. That sabr will always help you. You know, one of the things that awliya instruct and teach the students of the soul and of tariqah is that they say that 
try to avoid doing things that will draw you closer to dunya. Avoid those things that draw closer to you. Dunya, meaning if you do some things like, for example, you know, if you go on Facebook and you go, you've liked all those pages of worldly models and singers and musicians, and you keep scrolling down and you go through their life, then as soon as you go through their lifestyles and their stories, what are you going to be pleased with? With Allah or with what they are doing? With what they are doing. You're going to be like, oh, this guy has this much, this, uh, that guy has this much, I want that person, I want, I want, you know, what's it called, um, I want bodyguards with me to protect me, you know, I want to, I want to be rich, I want fame. You know what the real fame is? The real fame is to be hidden. That's the real fame. Yeah. You want people to know you? Who are these people? The creation of Allah. So the real fame is that you want Allah to know you. You want Allah to know you. Because He is the greatest, isn't He? So if the greatest one knows you, then you have the biggest fame. Because the, great one, the greatest one knows you. So you, you're the most famous then. The Prophet Sallallahu just the last of these, the Prophet Sallallahu said, O my Sahaba, O my companions, do I not tell you of a man who is my friend? Do I not inform you of a friend, of a man who is my friend? Who could be Prophet's friend? Who could be Prophet's friend? The Prophet Sallallahu said, the one who prays his Salah properly and when he goes out of his house, people do not point towards him. Is that man going? That he's not famous. He's my friend. The one who is not? The one who is not? Famous. And people are pointing towards him. Or oh, that man, this guy. Look at him, he's going. No one knows him, but he does his salah properly. He's my friend. You want to be a prophet's friend? Or you want to be famous? <laughs> eh? You want to be a rapper? Or you want to be a singer? Or you want to be a prophet's friend? Let's become prophet's friend by saying humble. Let's become prophet's friend by having that humility. Ya Rasulullah, we want to be close to you, not close to dunya. And only that is possible when we avoid fame and then we become famous. We avoid fame and only then we become famous. And we are not known by the people of this dunya. Hmm? We are known by the Creator of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then on the day of Qiyamah, when your face is glowing, and the angels will ask you, the angels will ask Allah, Ya Allah, who are these people? Who are these people that the faces are? Are they prophets? Are they from Anbiya alayhi salam? Are they from those people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reply, No, they're not the Anbiya, they're my friends. They are my friends. Because in dunya, they greeted at each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You come and give salam to me, why do you give salam to me? Because I've got some money to give you, or I give salam to you because you need to give me some. No, greeting each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we start doing that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us. And I do dua the Lord to the teachings of Kitab al Sunnah. Wa ma alina in the balaam.
All these Muslims in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, all these Muslims are going through such hard times. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to grant them freedom. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to help them. And Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to make them victorious. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Muhammadin wa barikasallim sallim alayhi. La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah.